he would purchase something and palm it off like it was his own. So he made the interest taboo. My father encouraged my interest by giving me an option of things to be interested in. And it starts from there. And then we kind of play knockout on which survives. I think at some points, my father took over in finding out what was interested because he probably saw something I didn't, maybe a potential a strength in one area more than another. Um, maybe, you know, when we're younger, we have a kind of delusions of grandeur that we, we think that we can do that, or we, we, we feel that we're better in that one, or we're more attracted to this one when 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 our strengths are in something else. I think the, the, the trick is when um, a parent has to learn how and when to enforce it or when to back off and say, okay, uh, um, let's see what you do. Um, so, he gave me a selection of things to be interested in. I have always tried, pretty much always succeeded, I think, in investing in my children in terms of, of trying to provide them with the tools that they need to develop a particular skill set. So, for example, when Clinton was young, as my oldest son, uh, I invested in a keyboard. <clears throat> and then we invested in a um, Atari, one of the early music uh, programs, you know, I forget what they're called. And then afterwards, <clears throat> I invested in an Apple. Then we invested in studio equipment. So that's just Clinton. So he's been a recipient of quite a big investment. My dad was quite smart. <laughs> what he would do is that he would purchase something and palm it off like it was his own. So he made the interest taboo. So one day I'd come home and I would um, see the Casio keyboard with drum pads on it and um, all singing and dancing and it would be in his bedroom set up and he'd be pretending like he's playing in it he was very smart he was <laughs> he's very wise and he would pretend like he's playing on it and he's like this is great in it and then playing with all the functions and stuff and what happens is it, it made it so taboo and he would shut the door and say no you're not allowed to touch it the, do the door would be slightly ajar and he'd be out and I would go in the room, turn it on, play on it, <laughs> and then shut the door back, and he'd come back and say, don't touch my things. And slowly, he would wean himself off of it and pretend that it was in his, and then he'd put it into my room, and then I would develop an, in an interest. As far as the other children have been concerned, I've invested wherever I can. Um, and the specific items, I cannot remember, but. I have invested in them. Where I've seen a particular skill set, I'll either buy a book or I'll pay for a course or wherever I think I can help them to be better at what they aspire to achieve, I'll invest whatever I can to help them achieve that. He was very good at making you think that the idea was yours. <laughs> and. Um... Uh, you know, I think Ronald Reagan said that he said, you know, I don't care how um, how the job gets done. Um, I don't care who takes the credit for it, so long as it gets done. My dad was very much like that. He was like, I don't care, you know, if um, you know if it, um, you know, if you're 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 interested. I'm going to make you interested in it. I'm going to pretend like it was mine. He'd kind of reverse it, wouldn't he? he would pretend like it was mine, and he'd say, oh, this is mine. This is my thing. Really had it for you, and then he would slowly turn it to you, and then you would think that you came up with this interest all by yourself. Um, very clever. 
my mindset has always been, that if I see a talent, I will try and invest in it. And I have to say that it's not only been for my children. There are other, and it mainly, it, it's mainly young people. But there are other people that I have invested financially to help them, maybe just a little, a little bit in an area that they need to go. It could be buying a book, it could be giving a little bit of cash, ain't a big deal. But the point is, wherever I see a talent, and wherever I see, if I see the person has an ambition and a desire and an enthusiasm and a, and a determination, but the thing that is holding them back is, is a few quid, it ain't a deal. It's really not a deal. It's not a biggie at all. So if I can say, there's a few quid, go and get your book, go and do this, go and, then I'll do it, and I feel I feel happy that I've done it. I, f I think people should do it, to be honest with you. I don't think I'm doing anything exceptional. I don't think it's any big deal. But we have to have an even balance of being a source of help and also to um, find help. Um, and I think the if you're if you're tuned into your house, you will always know that help is in your home. I'm a stronger believer of help.